Well, speaking about the challenges uh, of the enlargement for the European Union and for the Balkans, uh, we have to see the situation uh, of these days. Uh, European Union is uh, very much preoccupied with our own internal problems. Uh, the good thing is that uh, we have all the indicators showing that we are getting out of the crisis, that the ma macro figures are improving and I really hope that our citizens will, will feel the improvement very soon. We are also dealing with uh, reshaping the European architecture, making our European structures more efficient. Uh, speaking about the banking union, about the fiscal union, uh, about the four pillars. This is all legitimate, relevant, important for the European Union. Uh, what is equally important from my perspective is that we do not forget uh, that enlargement has been one of our uh, flagship policies, has been one of the most successful policies of the European Union and it's time to give the, the enlargement the attention it deserves. That means for the last years the, it has not been a very popular topic. And one, uh, on one hand, one can understand that, but on the other hand, we must not forget that these countries can, in our neighborhood, in the Balkans, wait for us, for the signals. They, they want to hear from us that uh, we are, they are part of our future plans and future, future strategy. So uh, I really want enlargement policy to uh, get the attention and, and the, the place on our radar screen it deserves. Uh, speaking about enlargement from the Balkans perspective, uh, they should do their homework. Uh, because uh, the process depends not on the number of, uh, of speeches delivered uh, or toasts raised, but it's really about the reforms uh, which are implemented on the ground in their countries. They have to make sure that enlargement is number one priority for them, and not only in papers, in official documents, but in real life in the first place. That means everything they do, every decision they make, every step they undertake must be measured by the perspective of enlargement. Uh, whether this brings them closer to the European me membership or not. So this is, uh, we've seen a positive example in Serbia recently with the current government, which uh, left no doubts that for them this is the number one priority. And we would like to see this also with the uh, other countries, particularly Bosnia, Herzegovina and, and, and Macedonia. So uh, it's really important that enlargement is understood as uh, something which is important not only for the countries of the Balkans, but it's equally important for us, for the countries of the European Union. Speaking about the crisis of, in Ukraine and the role of the European Union and, and the international community in mitigating it, uh, I want to stress the fact that uh, this crisis uh, found us unprepared. We did not expect that uh, in the 21st century in, in Europe uh, anything like this uh, could happen. And, uh, but uh, I don't think we were prepared to deal with the crisis. Uh, we, we were prepared to deal with the changes of internationally recognized borders. Uh, now. Our role is imminence. European Union is neighbor of Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is part of uh, our Eastern neighborhood policy. So we are here to do our utmost to help uh, calm down, stabilize the situation in Ukraine and, and to uh, return Ukraine back on political track. Uh, the, the presidential elections on the 25th of May are a very important step towards normalization of the situation. And this has to be followed by the constitutional changes and by uh, the process of decentralization uh, and, and later on by parliamentary elections. What is extremely important is that no part of the Ukrainian territory, no uh, region, no na national minority, no uh, religious minority or any other minority feels excluded from the processes in Ukraine. And European Union should be uh, the standard bearer, would I say. It should be the one who acts as an uh, impartial uh, player who is there to help uh, in enforce, would I say, the democratic principles, the f full respect for the rule of law, who should help when requested to investigate uh, the crimes that were committed there to make sure that no criminals will go uh, unpunished. And of course, we'll, we shall provide the leadership also in the post-crisis uh, development in Ukraine. I see the role of your institute uh, is extremely important. You are part of the wider uh, international community, uh, part of those who are trying to promote uh, the international ro law and the rules uh, for the global responsible behavior. Uh, you know this uh, international community consists of uh, different players governments and the executive being on, on the one side, but then think tanks, institutes being an important 
partner. It's really important that we in interact. It's important that we exchange our views. It's important that we, as governments, uh, receive a feedback from you. Uh, you are also here to set our agenda, to draw our attention to the issues which you might think that uh, we governments do not pay enough attention. Uh, you are also an important reality check for us, for our policies. You, sh you should really give us feedback about things we have not done properly. And uh, your institute deals with extremely important, very relevant issues of global security and uh, the fact that it's uh, uh, located here in The Hague where so many important international institutions uh, such as International Court of Justice or the in International Co Court on former Yugoslavia and, and others uh, are located I think gives you even greater re relevance because you are dealing with the issues of international law uh, also from this uh, perspective of a real life uh, and the real agenda of this insti institution. So I very much appreciate the possibility to interact with you, with your institute, and I, I, I really enjoy the communication with you, and I really hope you will continue playing this constructive role also in the future.